Oh, beautiful for smoggy skies, insecticided grain, for strip mined mountains, majesty above the asphalt plain. America, America, man sheds his waste on thee and hides the pines with billboard signs from sea to oily sea. I'm reading to you today from the authorized version of the scriptures. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. We are going to be examining some other resources today. I'm going to be reading to you a little from this book right here, the original 13. And also we will be reading some, par uh, some portions from this book. Samuel Morris's book, Foreign Conspiracies. But please follow me along. We're going to begin, today is the fourth. Today we are going to begin with the fourth proverb. We're going to be reading, oh, verses 14 on to the close of the chapter in Proverbs chapter 4. Please, follow me along word for word, verse by verse. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. The American dream. Oh boy. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 to the close of the chapter. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men, the wicked and evil men, Jesuits, the way of Catholicism, Satan's church. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Hence, the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ and all these coadjutors who work for the Vatican. Those in England, those in Canada, those in Mexico. Okay? Yes. 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 They are restless and repentless. Except to their Jesuit priest, of course. Of course. And just like this verse says, For they sleep not except they have done mischief up at all hours of the night night working keyboard warriors trying to destroy people and cast mud and slander and dung upon people that's what they do that's what Catholics do for they eat the bread of wickedness you know their blessed little cookie that they worship and drink the wine of violence as I have spake with you before I do not think that verses 16 and 17, um, <laughs> I do not think that you can disregard that this is a mention onto what is known as today Catholicism. Now, during the time that this was uh, written at the dispensation, at the dispensation that it was, maybe not, but um, you can definitely put Catholicism and those who follow the Catholic faith. Whatever of the daughters it is, uh, can definitely uh, put into these two verses, especially verse 16 and especially verse 17. Uh, for they eat the bread of wickedness, the wafer cookie, and drink the wine of violence. Yeah. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. And there are those out there who think that shining light as an example is given to us here in America. The American dream. <laughs> it's a fantasy. Unless, unless you are wealthy and are in with the uh, esoteric crowd. Yeah. Yeah. 
The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not of what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Yes. Yes. And, and what about that heart of yours that, you know, that these wicked people, well, God knows my heart, they use that to, um, to defend their sinful behavior. Yes. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 10 and 11, uh, 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Consequence, recompense. Okay? But yes, we're told to keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And when your heart goes after that of Catholicism, and all her offerings that she offers, you know. She's decked her bed with coverings of tapestry, cinnamons and fine odors. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, boy. And let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Because narrow is the way that leads unto life. And there be few who find it. But broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And burp, <laughs> America has fallen in that way. That way of destruction. Ponder the path of thy feet. And let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Very appropriate, very neat words on the 4th of July. Where we here in America, apparently, celebrate our independence. What, what are we independent from? We're independent from God. The God of the scriptures. The God of the authorized version. The God that is being worshipped today is the God of Catholicism. Satan. Yeah. Oh, there are those within this nation that do truly serve the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who are of the church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. But we're that big. Whereas the Catholic influence in this country, America's, there's no hope for America as a nation. But individually, that's a different story. And that is the, and that is what we are going to be looking at today. That is what we are going to be discussing today. And uh, one of the reasons why we are going to be reading from Samuel B. F. B. Morse's book. Uh, Mr. Morse here, the inventor of Morse code, he basically prophesied of the America that you and I see today. And then you have these imbeciles like uh, Phil Robertson and other people who try to say that, you know, we can bring America back, make America great again. That's impossible. That's impossible. Because America is a nation independent from God. From God. Independent from God. Independent. We're depend this country is dependent on what? The Vatican. Because the Vatican runs, controls, bought, paid for, owns this country. Absolutely it does. I will give you evidence today. I will give you evidence. This book by Samuel Morris, by the way, this is over 100 years old. And he warned of what would happen. He warned of the influence of the Jesuits. 
the influence of Catholicism. And he pointed to the weakness of our own system that allowed this poison to fester and grow within this country. And there are those King James Bible believing Christians out there that will defend the right for a Catholic to worship the, the man of sin, the son of perdition, to worship Satan. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you straight out the gate, that it was Catholicism was the cause for the fall of our nation. And of all the religious liberties that we have, and we do, uh, you know, and, and we'll see some of this in, some of the, uh, in one of the resources that we're going to be looking at. Um, there were different, there were all kinds of sects of what they call Christianity. Okay? But the one that should never have been allowed within this nation, Catholicism, is the one that has destroyed this nation. And hey, I'm going to tell you straight from the get-go, I am anti-Catholic. I do not hate the Catholic person, spirit, soul, and body. I do not hate the Catholic person, but I hate the religion, the faith of Catholicism. Oh, they, hey, guilty as charged. You want to come at me with anti-Catholic bias? Hi, hi, I'm anti-Catholic. I am. And I make no bones about that. Catholicism is Satan's religion. And because we as a country, as a country, have allowed from the beginnings that poison that satanic, yea hath God said religion, to grow in this country. We were doomed from the beginning, boy. A lot of people like to, well, 1776, 17, you got to go way back before that, man. I'm going to show you that by 1632, by 1632, almost 100 years before 1776, Obviously, that by 1632, this, which would become this nation of America, of the United States, was doomed. Was doomed. Why? Because America and its dictates and its constitution, you know that thing? Which is just there, just as a decoration, an ornament. Okay, because we are under a state of emergency that was never rescinded. Hence, that's that's just like a uh, a vain shoe, a poor player that dances and struts itself upon the stage to be heard of no more. That's what the Constitution has become. And I reckon. Even from its inception, religious liberty, you know, uh, what is it, uh, liberty of conscience, to worship God how you see fit. Paul talks about that, by the way. You know, in Romans chapter 14, okay? Romans chapter 14, by the way, you know? And people will use what Paul said to defend their God-given right to worship the God of Catholicism. And not only to justify it, but to venerate it, as they would say. Makes me a wonder for some of these people if they were ever truly saved to begin with. Why would you defend Catholicism? Well, that's what we do in America. What did, what did uh, His Holiness Mr. Trump say? He wanted to end Catholic bias? Joe Biden is a Catholic? The true president-to-be, uh, Kamala Harris? She's trained by Jesuits? What's that guy uh, from New York, that Jesuit guy from New York? He's the actual head of this nation. Catholicism rules this nation. Catholicism, Catholicism is in control of people. Catholicism is in control. 
Look at Proverbs chapter 6. And this is and this is the plight for most Americans. And we have to realize, people, my American countrymen, that trying seeking to get this pathetic nation, this Jesuit Catholic nation that America has become, to get this nation to turn and to go to the God of the Scriptures, it's impossible. It's impossible. Because, well, which one, right? They use, the, the Christians, they use Bibles. Well, which Bible? The God of the Bible. Which Bible? Uh, I'm not a Christian. And I read the authorized version of the Scriptures. Okay? Distinction between the two. Why? Because Catholicism has come in with its yea hath God said, wanting to bring everybody together, and then there's a blur. There's a blur. What has happened? Proverbs chapter 6, verses 11, uh, 4 unto verse 11. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter. And I don't mean the one from England either. Even though I think that man is a provincial, but whatever. And as a bird from the hand of the fowler. As a bird from the hand of the fowler. Who's the hunter? Catholicism. They're hunting for souls to worship that man of sin, the son of perdition, after we, the church of the living God, get redeemed. And you're going to defend the Catholics. You're going to defend the Catholic religion by supporting days that are specifically there to worship their God. Shame on you. Shame on every single one of you. You have the liberty to do so. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You sure do. But what is a prophet? Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty Come as one that traveleth, travaileth, excuse me, and thy want as an armed man. Oh, but some of you, depending on what uh, demographic you are from. And, you know, it really does not matter the color of your skin either. One color matters here in America. That's color green. That's color green. Green as referring to the federal, the Jesuit Federal Reserve notes. Now, we don't have any cash on us, or else I show you again. We're actually broke. <laughs> you know, um, you look at the American dollar bill with the symbol of Ra on it, the Masonic star above the symbol of Ra, talking about the eagle, the eye of Horus. Yeah, there's only one color that truly matters in this country. That's the color green. And despite your kindred, whether you are of Japheth, whether you are of Ham, whether you are of Shem, if you have the appropriate color that is the color of this nation, green, money, then you're set. Then you're set. Land of the free, home of the brave, yeah. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? You know, like I've talked to you all about before, about that movie, They Live. Don't go, don't, don't go, don't, don't. Just leave it. But John Carpenter's They Live. They live. Catholicism lives while America is asleep. <laughs> Complaining about how much... It costs to have a grill out for today. 
not realizing, not wanting to know the truth, that it's Catholicism. That our country, our country is on a teeter-totter. And there's going to be coming a event, whatever it is, I don't know. You watch. There's going to be coming an event that's going to tip it in the favor and then the ultimate destruction of this country will come. America's already destroyed. On a national level. Okay? And this is where these stupid, and I'm being polite when I say that, when these stupid charismatics come around talking about, oh, the, the latter rain, that there's going to be a great revival in America. Imbeciles like uh, Phil Robertson, I, I, I can't stand that guy. That guy is such a wicked devil. But, you know, that, that guy is like, if we would... If we would just love one another. <laughs> love. Yeah, love one another. Yeah. Yeah. And see, another thing about what Catholicism has done to this nation, through their Bibles, not the scriptures, through the Bibles. You know, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13? Yeah. The Bibles take away charity, which is self-sacrifice, and put in love. What is love? See, the love that these people talk about, love your neighbor, is a love that doesn't judge sin according to the scriptures. And we're going to talk about that a little later. We're going to talk about that a little later. But on a national scale, this nation, America, returning onto the God of the scriptures, it's not going to happen. But individually, that's something else. And that is what we in these last days we need to concentrate on. Because let's 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 do a little reading here. Go to Isaiah chapter one. You're gonna notice that we're gonna be in primarily in the Old Testament because when you have these Christians who want to bolster up America as this godly nation, they will go to promises and things that are doctrinally specifically aimed at the Jewish people. Okay? And then they try to apply them to today doctrinally for America, which you cannot do. There is a lot of instruction and in righteousness at what we are going to be looking at, yes. But the reason why we are looking at this is because to show you that what God did to the apple of his eye, he brought them through the ringer. And America, which is a nation that is against God, we think we're going to escape scot-free, huh? We've talked about this before. In the description box, an older video that the Lord had me to do, America, what happened. Very much the same principle that we are talking about. But there again, the average people who watch these videos, your attention span, and hey, this is true. Hi, true and me. Our attention span is that of an act. And the Lord has allowed me to do quite a few videos. So, this is a little refresher course. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 4 and verse 7. Ah, sinful nation. Hmm. A people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. Children that are corruptors. The American dream. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. At any cost. And doing your best to blow the other guy away. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. Um, Yuri Bezmenov makes the great example about the martial art of judo. That uh, when someone's coming to punch you, all you do is step out of the way and uh, like grab them by the wrist and use their own momentum against them to throw them down. If you've ever been thrown by a judo throw before, that hurts! Oh boy! But yes, you know, you take their wrist and boom, just let, help them to fall already. America as a nation is done for. It's only by the grace of God that we are still afloat as we are today. And it is truly the grace of God. Why? Because of his body, the church of the living God. Because there are still people here that our Lord is going to save today. 
Because I firmly believe, and I've shared this with you before, I firmly believe that every day, somewhere on this planet, somewhere, every day, at least one soul is saved. A lot of people like to, well, Brad, I, hey, we, I don't know what's going on over in Abu Dhabi right now. And even in Australia, the time zone is so different, we don't know what's going on over there. We don't know at what part in the world someone is being broken, having contrition, and having the fear of the Lord, calling upon the Lord, name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord is saving them. We don't know if that's happening. I personally want to believe, hope, that at least one soul a day in the vastness of this world, at least one soul is being saved. One a day. That would be 365 souls a year. That is my hope. That is my hope. Whether or not that's happening, we don't know, and we and, and it's a debate that really doesn't profit much, <laughs> but it helps us to have hope because I believe when there comes a string of days where no souls are saved, verse six, in Isaiah chapter one. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. The wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither, not, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Yeah, yeah. Christianity heals the hurt of, these, of the American people slightly by saying peace, peace. And there is no peace. <laughs> Unless you got the money. Unless you got the, the color of green on your side. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land strangers devour in your presence. Isn't that true for America today? And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Yes. Yes, strangers, Jesuits, Catholics. Devour it in your presence as it is desolate. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Strangers. Catholics, Jesuits. And this is talking specifically doctrinally on to, the, to Israel. But for our instruction in righteousness, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also go, while we're in Isaiah, go to Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Verses 1 on to verse 8. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. So there is hope individually. Individually. For every individual soul, every individual person, which is a spirit, soul, and body, there is hope. But on the scale of the nation... But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue have murdered, per muttered perverseness. And look at America today. Look at what, look at what America glorifies as principle. Wealth, opulence, entertainment. Feel good. Love is love. Love don't judge. And this thing about Roe versus Wade. It's interesting. They overturned Roe versus Wade, but yet as as heretofore as in the beginning, left it up to the state to decide if it's if they're going to keep it, uh, abortion legal or not. What was their purpose of doing that? What was the Jesuits' purpose? Because, uh, you know, onto the Jesuit, onto the Catholic, uh, America was always seen as a Protestant nation. But we're not protest. The only thing that we as America is pro are protesting is the truth. Well, why did they do that? I believe 
to turn people against people. Kind of like what they did with the Black Lives Matter thing, you know, trying to get that race war uh, ignited, which they almost succeeded. Okay. With this, the Roe versus Wade thing. And of course, I'm of the Church of the Living God. I hate abortion. It's murder. It's murder. Okay? But see, leave it up to the state. So that will be just another thing for the American people to be at odds and war against each other over. Yes. See, and there are those out there. Uh, it's like, well, this is a big step for America. For America to be made great again. Yeah. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Because they're leaving it up to the states and to the individual states. Like here in Illinois, oh yeah, you should bet your bottom dollar with Prisker. That you go around here and see the government signs of Prisker. Yeah. But yeah, here in Illinois, which is a Demokami state, um, <laughs> yeah, abortion is going to still be legal. Yeah. And they say abortion is anti-woman and stuff like that. See, see, just another thing to divide the country. It should have never been in, put into law in the first place. Roe versus Wade. Okay? Should have never been put into law in the first place. Abortion should have always had been illegal. Unless, of course, there are certain circumstances. Okay? But even thus... Even thus, I know of women, I know of a woman who was actually raped and gave birth onto that child, didn't murder the child, gave the child up for adoption, yes, yes, because it's not the child's fault. It's not the child's fault. Abortion is murder. No matter how you want to uh, put the veil over it, it's murder. It's murder. And since it's been left up into the hand of the individual nation, excuse me, yeah, individual nation, the individual state, uh, it's just going to be a means to tear America even farther apart. It's not a victory. It's the beginning of a defeat. Okay? Let's continue. Yes, verse 3. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs. And weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are the thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Yeah. And see, Christianity today, they're all about what makes you feel good. They don't want to scare people. Christianity is Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Just one verse. A couple of one verse references here. Uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 16. This is what Christianity is. This is what Christianity is. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. And of course, then right away, these, these deplorable, deplorable, abhorrent, vomitous, easy believism heretics 
will come around and say, Oh, preaching works salvation, backloading works. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, and on to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, the works of the law, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, are two good works, not to be saved or stay saved. God doesn't save you just so you can sit on your duff doing nothing. No. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Good works. Being examples unto the lost. But see, the only thing that Christianity today, here in America especially, the only thing that Christianity fights against are those of the church of the living God who preach the truth of the scripture from the authorized version. That's all that, oh yeah, oh yeah, willing to marry sodomites, willing to be tolerant unto sin, but when it comes to preaching the true God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, from the scriptures, that's where they start to fight. That's where they get adamant. They're not adamant for truth. They're adamant for their feelings. Isaiah 58, go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 58, just, just, just one verse. Just one verse, Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58, verse 2. <laughs> yeah, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. Yeah, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God but now go to Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 22 on to verse 24. <laughs> yeah. For though thou wash thee with nitre, and take thee much soap, yet thy iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord God. How canst thou say, I am not polluted, I have not gone after Balim, See thy way in the valley. Know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift dromedary traversing her ways. Yeah, they love a reward on every corn floor. They go after, they go after what feels good. And whatever doesn't feel good, which usually is the truth of the scriptures, oh, that's what they hate. That's what they hate. That's what they hate. A wild ass used to the wilderness that snuffeth up the wind at her pleasure. Whatever makes you feel good. Yeah, truth is only good to you when it suits your own personal desire and your own personal principle. But when it cuts you, that's when you come on the offensive and call people lost. You're supposed to love the truth. And the truth is to change you, not you change the truth to suit your own means. What is that? The saying of the uh, Jesuits, uh, ad majorium de glorium, for the greater glory of God, the ends justify the means. Yeah. Yes. As a wild ass used to the wilderness that snuffeth up the wind at her pleasure, in her occasion, who can turn her away? Yeah, these Christians, when they got something set on their on their mind, they're going to do that sin no matter what it is. Why do you think? You know, you look at uh, the, uh, the Lord had me to do a video, unfortunately, but fortunately at the same time rebuking a, a wicked young man and uh, Mark the mess. And you look in the comment section, don't judge. Are you? This is a, come on, you people. People who say, don't judge me, they're doing that to defend, they put it up as a defensive measure to defend their sin. Yes. All they that seek her will not weary themselves. In her month they shall find her. Yes. <laughs> In their month they shall find her. <laughs> yeah. And Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 12 now. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Now you got to remember, 
the scriptures that we are looking at are in the Old Testament, specifically given on to the children of Israel. This is our instruction in righteousness that we are looking at. And when people, these Christians, want to justify America as this, them being, uh, this country being a godly nation, which I don't think it ever truly was, okay? Um, they like to, they especially like 2 Corinthians chapter 7. <laughs> or not 2 Corinthians, excuse me. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Oh boy, they love that one. But Deuteronomy chapter 12. Verses 29 on to verse 32. And this, remember, doctrinally, is written onto the Jewish nation of Israel, not to America. But we are taking instruction for righteousness for America, not doctrine. Okay? Because this applies only to Israel, doctrinally. But America, which is not the apple of God's eye, Isaiah, uh, Deuteronomy, excuse me, 12, verses 29, on to verse 32. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their God, saying, How did these nations serve their gods, even so will I do likewise. Even so will I do likewise. How did the heathen worship their god? Oh, at the mass? And yet, that has been incorporated into Christianity? Yeah. Oh, it's veiled as church building worship. Mm -hmm. But it's the same principle of that of Catholicism. Because we've got to remember, Catholicism is Christianity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, there's supposed to be a difference between we who are saved and those who profess to know God but in works they deny Him. And, you know, this emergent movement, what, well, I'm a, uh, what was it, uh, that McLaren, McLaren guy, he's a Buddhist. <laughs> he's a Buddhist and also a Muslim. <laughs> and also a Hindu, and also a Catholic, and also a Christian, blending everything together. Yeah. Verse 31. Thou shalt not do unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. Look at the holy days here in America. Halloween. Okay? Halloween. Christ Mass. Valentine's Day. Columbus Day. And people defend it. Your God-given rights. What God? What God-given rights? The God of this nation is not the God of the Scriptures. The God of this nation is the little G God of this world. And I say, has always been so. Oh, yeah. There was hope for this country at the very beginnings. But see, the minute that we allowed Maryland into the mist, America was done for. America was done for. This dream, this dream, this American dream. It's just that. Unless you got the greenbacks. Or unless you're an immigrant from another nation that has more rights than someone that is homegrown. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and why is it that way? To favor the Catholics, the Jesuits that come here. Because remember, remember, they are the invading force that has invaded America long ago and destroyed it. So, for a Jesuit priest disguised as a Schumacher, okay, has to have good rights and good uh, protection to come in here to, you know, to boot the door and shout through the crack. You know? <laughs> Whatsoever thing 
What's, what thing, excuse me, soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. And even back, I mean, even some of the founding fathers, so-called, Thomas Paine, who was all about religious liberty, but yet he was against the God of the Scriptures. Thomas Jefferson, okay, the Jefferson Bible, he didn't believe in the uh, supernatural elements of the Scriptures, but he picked and chose things that Jesus said that sounded good, the things about morality and stuff like that, but he didn't believe in the God of the Scriptures. You got to remember, our founding fathers, that they call them, were deists. They believed in a God. They professed that they believed in the God of the Scriptures. But look at, for example, Benjamin Franklin. That guy's in hell. I got many people mad at me for saying that, and I'm going to get you mad again. Benjamin Franklin, he was not a saved man. He was a Freemason of the highest order. He bowed at every altar. Okay? A Freemason. Like a majority of our founding fathers were. And they worshipped the grand architect of the universe. Satan. What do, you, uh, what do you desire, apprentice? Light. And more light. Masons. Which are controlled by the Jesuits today, obviously. Also, I believe that uh, George Washington was also a Freemason. Ah, I know there are those out there. No, he was a Baptist, Brad. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Mr. Eric John Phelps um, would uh, say, oh, no, George Washington, he was, he was truly saved. Manly Palmer Hall didn't think so. Uh, was that Pike guy? He didn't think so. You know. Uh, Manly Palmer Hall, the quintessent uh, Freemason. He kind of thought that George Washington was a Freemason. I do, too. And this thought that, you know, someone being a Freemason or a Jesuit, you got to remember, Jesuits were infiltrators. Uh, their job was to put on the facade to pretend to be something that they're not. You know? So is it any wonder that a Freemason could also adopt to Baptist ideology? Look at Stephen Anderson. I rest my case. Okay? Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 on to verse 14. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Again, doctrinally, this is specifically talking for the children of Israel. We're taking instruction and in righteousness for this. Okay? Instruction and in righteousness. How we are to live according to his righteousness within the present dispensation. Doctrine. How a man is made right within the current dispensation. Okay? Made right with God within that dispensation. Under the dispensation it was faith of the law, it was faith and works. Under this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, by grace through faith. Okay? Doctrine is what makes a man right with God. Man also encompassing a woman. Woman came out of man. Okay? Doctrine is that which is pertinent within the dispensation which makes a man right with God. That's what doctrine is. This is instruction in righteousness. Okay? When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. All I gotta say is Catholic. That's all I gotta say. But their worship of saints, the worship of the Queen of Heaven, Semiramis, you know, the Catholic Mary, the worship of the buildings, the worship of uh, their Pope, Sosa. Yeah. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer. Ooh, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Or a consulter with 
familiar spirits. You know, like the long-haired ghost that's scaring people. <laughs> Give me a break. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. For all that, the, and you know, uh, verses 10 and 11, Catholicism does all that. Oh, they're right here in America, they're not burning with a torch. Uh, little children, to Moloch, no. But no, infant baptism. Okay. <laughs> Use of divination. Observer of times. Lent. Okay. Or an enchanter or a witch. I'm a witch. Like the witch doctors and the hospitables. Hospital. Knights hospitaliter. Hospital. Hospice. Knights hospitaliter. Um, uh, incidentally, if I can find the links off of Amazon for these books, I will put them in either the description box or the comment section. Okay? But he even mentions about the Knights Hospitaliter. Hospitals. Knights Hospitaliter. Knights Hospitaliter. Uh, uh, Order of Knights of Catholicism. <laughs> For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to suffer thee to do so. And we're going to touch on this particular portion of scripture here later within this video. But that is to be noted. Because it's within this that people can come in with liberty of conscience. Because for these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. Let them alone. They want to do worship Satan, let them alone. And that I agree with. That I agree with. Absolutely. But see, the point is what we're talking about today is to show you, because we have allowed Catholicism to thrive within this country, this country is doomed. This country is doomed. The only hope there is, is that you as a person, spirit, soul, body, as an individual person, that is all we can do. And that is the best we can hope for. Because God is not going to save America. God is allowing America to continue because of we, the Church of the Living God. But sooner or later, sooner or later, this country is going to implode. And most people, uh, I have a lot of correspondence with people outside my nation. Even they, you know, most people are, are, you know, will admit, you know, it's like, yeah, Brad, your nation is, <laughs> and that's okay, because it, we are, America is doomed. Now, one second. All right, I'm going to read to you a little from this book, the original thirteen, the original thirteen states. Um, <laughs> gonna see something in this. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to find the link for this book. And for this book off of Amazon and put them, I, like I said, either in the description box or in the uh, comment section. Now, what I'm going to read to you here is, I'm going to read to you, oh, up to, I'm going to read to you here, first of all, the introduction, some of the introduction, I'm going to read this page to you, and I'm going to read... Oh, up to, oh, right about, right about to here, where my finger is on this page. So I'm going to read this page and up to where my finger is on this. Go ahead and pause this and read it if you can. Okay. Check this out. This has been a very interesting book to read and a very good resource. Very good resource. We have to go back before 1776 to see. 
originally, originally, America was never intended for a place for Catholics. But since Catholicism was made, was allowed to prosper here, hence our downfall. But the whole power over the subject of religion is left exclusively to the state governments to be acted upon according to their own sense of justice and the state constitutions. U.S. Supreme Court Justice Joseph Story, 1833, Commentaries on the Constitution. So it's a state thing, just like abortion is now a state thing. Okay? James Madison introduced the First Amendment in the first session in Congress in 1811. During his term as the fourth president of the United States, Madison appointed Joseph Story to the Supreme Court. Justice Joseph Story served on the court 34 years and almost single-handedly founded Harvard Law School. Harvard, yeah. The Constitution of the United States of America of America Analysts and Interpretation, prepared by the Legislative, Legislative Reference Service of the Library of Con Congress, Edward S. Corwin, Editor, U.S. Government Printing Office, Washington, 1953, page 758, stated, In his Commentaries on the Constitution, 1833, Justice Joseph Story asserted that the purpose of the First Amendment was not to discredit the existing, as existing, the then existing state establishments of religion, but rather to exclude from the national government all power to act on the subject, to have a one nation government uh, thing, kind of like Catholicism does, kind of like the Church of England does, okay? That was it, to leave it up to the state, okay? That was the intention. But with the premise, that that nation, that state, individual sovereign state, would be going after the God of the Scriptures, not the, the little G God of this world, though. Okay? That is what is lost within all of this. Right away, it's like, well, I'm, I'm free to worship Mickey Mouse. Well, well, yes, you are, but the, yes, you are. Yes, you do have that liberty. Good for you. Is that going to profit you in the Day of Judgment? No, I don't think so. Okay? But see, the intention was that these states would worship the God of the Scriptures, not go after Satan. Okay? Just the story continued. In some of the states, here's the example, Episcopalians constituted the predominant sect, and others Presbyterians, and others Congregationalists, in others, Quakers, and in others again, there was a close numerical rivalry among contending sects. It was impossible that there should not arise perpetual strife and perpetual jealousy on the subject of ecclesiastical ascendancy. See, when Christ is divided, yes, we have liberty to do these things. That's a prophet. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Okay? If the national government were left free to create a religious establishment, okay, it was impossible, excuse me, that there should not arise perpetual strife and perpetual jealousy on the subject of ecclesiastical ascendancy if the national government were left free to create a religious establishment. The only security was in the abolishing was in the abolishing the power. The only security was in the abolishing in the abolishing the power. But this alone would have been an imperfect security if it had not been followed up by a declaration of the right of the free exercise of religion. Thus, the whole power over the subject of religion is left exclusively to the state governments to be acted upon according to their own sense of justice and the states, the state constitutions. So, but see, that was done with the idea, with the idea that these states would go after 
the one true God of the scriptures. But as we have already gotten a hint of, that the sex, S-E-C-T, thank you, S, were contending with one another. Is Christ divided? Hmm? Apparently so. Just as today, some states allow underage drinking, and others do not. Some states have smoking bans, and others do not. Some states legalized marijuana, and others did not. Some states allow gambling, and others do not. Some states allow prostitution, Nevada and formerly Rhode Island, and others do not. And some states allow homosexual marriage, and others do not. At the time the Constitution was ratified, some states allowed more religious freedom, i.e. Pennsylvania, which allowed Catholics, of course, and Rhode Island, and others did not, Massachusetts and Connecticut. John Boyever's Law Dictionary, Philadelphia, J.B. Lippincott, Lippincott, C.O., 1889, stated in its definition of religion, of, of, stated in its definition of religion, the Constitution of the United States provides that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. This provision and that relating to religious tests are limitations upon the power of the Congress only. The Christian religion is, of course, recognized by the government. And see right there, it says right there, the Christian religion, the Church of the Living God, faith on Christ. See, that was the beginning principle that these states, well, yes, they had differing views and sex. Yes, the idea was, yes, you have religious liberty to worship the God of the Scriptures as your conscience sees fit. Okay? Yes, the God of the Scriptures. But what has happened? We've allowed Islam, okay? We've allowed Catholicism. Catholicism is more the culprit. Catholicism is more the culprit, which we will see, okay? Yet, the preservation of religious liberty is left to the states. During North Carolina's convention to ratify the U.S. Constitution, Governor Samuel Johnson stated, July 30th, 1788, I know but two or three states where there is the least chance of establishing any particular religion. The people of Massachusetts and Connecticut are mostly Presbyterians. In every other state, the people are divided into a great number of sects. In Rhode Island, the tenets of the Baptists, I believe, prevail. In New York, they are divided very much the most numerous are the Episcopalians and the Baptists. In New Jersey, they are as much divided as we are. Division. Hmm. In Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania, and if any sect prevails more than others, it is that of the Quakers. In Maryland, the Episcopalians are most numerous. Though there are other sects, in Virginia, there are many sects. You all know that their religious you all know what their religious sentiments are. So in all the southern states, they differ, as also New Hampshire. I hope, therefore, that gentlemen will see there is no cause of fear that any one religion shall be exclusively established. Ah, ah, but not so. Not so. Not so. Now, I want to read to you about Maryland. Right there it says that Mary, Maryland, 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 the Episcopalians are most numerous. Church of England. Remember, the Church of England was by what? Uh, King Henry, I believe it was. Might have that wrong, but the Church of England was the English substitute for the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? Hey, even you British have to acknowledge that, okay? But Maryland, Maryland, Maryland. Now this Church of the Living God, those of you who know the truth about Catholicism, this ought to make you ill, 
and I'm sorry. But we're looking at this, just one, we're just looking at this. We're just looking at this first paragraph, okay? Where my finger ends, okay? We're looking at that very first paragraph, okay? We're looking at this to show you something. That by 1632, a root for Catholicism was made. And hence, the beginning of our downfall as a country. Through the very freedoms that we allow, our enemy, Catholicism, has destroyed us. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? See, religious liberty, yes, to worship the God of the scriptures. Catholicism does not worship the God of the scriptures. Not at all. They are Satan's church. Okay? And because we have allowed Catholicism within this country. And you might be saying, well, what about the Jews? And what about Islam? Um, the Jews, the apple of God's eye, sure, let them over here, of course. So we, as a nation, could be a witness unto them of the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, remember, we were grafted in, the Gentile were grafted in to make the Jew jealous, okay? Okay, remember that. But... Catholicism? Like I told you at the beginning of this video, I am anti-Catholic. Not against the person, spirit, soul, and body, but against the established religion of Catholicism. I am anti-Catholic. Catholicism is Satan's church. And you give a foothold for Catholicism to take root, using our own liberties as a weapon against us. By 1632, America was slighted for destruction. Maryland was founded as a colony for persecuted Catholics. Persecuted Catholics. That brings a tear to my glass eye. It's Catholicism. You read Fox's Book of Martyrs. It's Catholicism. The, that woman, that woman... Uh, you know, that's talked about in Revelation. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, drunk off the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. It's Roman Catholicism. Yet Maryland, Maryland was founded as a colony for persecuted Catholics in 1632. Over a hundred years before 1776, obviously. By Cecil Calvert and his brother, Leonard Calvert, it was named for King Charles I's wife, Henrietta Maria, who was a French Catholic. Religious tensions of that era were such that the Puritans of Boston would not allow Calvert, Calvert into their ports after his transatlantic voyage. And some of the 13 states, original 13 states, would have not at all allowed Catholicism within their borders. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You allow Catholicism into your nation. Hence, it's downfall. And you got to remember too, people, Catholicism today is the Jesuit order. The Jesuit order is Catholicism. You have to remember that. But see, this was in 1632. <laughs> America allowed a colony, a state, Maryland, Maryland. Oh, it is named after uh, this guy's wife. Are you that dense? What's the God that Catholics worship? Yes, they worship Sosa. The puppet guy, Francis. Both of them. But they worship Mary. No, we venerate her. Okay. Okay. Just like you don't work, worship uh, the Catholic God on Christ Mass, right? You just venerate. Give me a break. Give me a break. See, Catholicism was given a foothold way back when. And remember, our ancestors... Yes, which were English Puritans, Calvinistic English Puritans, yes, yes. But they did it to escape the persecution of Catholicism. And yet, 
Catholicism used our own system against us. Like the Jew, like Yuri Bezmenov says, the judo martial art. Uh, if someone goes and throws a swing at you, you move out of the way, you trip them up or guide their hand, let them fall on their own. This religious liberty thing. See, as we looked at, the evidence is there that the religious liberty that was intended was that these people and this nation would worship the God of the scriptures, not the God of this world who is Satan, which Roman Catholicism has introduced. President Trump said he's going to end Catholic bias. Smoking Joe is a Catholic. Okay? A Kamala Harris, trained Jesuit. Now, I'm going to get to this book. This book is also over 100 years old. We are going to be reading, I believe this is chapter 5 in this book okay we're going to be reading quite a bit in this in this thing here okay and we're also going to be reading some other points within this okay but we are going to be reading quite extensively in this Samuel Morse warned warned us over a hundred years ago warned us for what would happen if America does not did not rise up to at least acknowledge the fact of the Jesuit order as a cancer, Catholicism as a cancer, but that it is our own system that has allowed this cancer to grow, unchecked. Now, uh, there are some highlighted spots here that we are going to be reading, but uh, we're going to, so I'm not going to I, I'm going to put the link for this in the description box, so I'm not going to show you the entirety of all of this because uh, there, we're going to be reading some select highlighted portions from this. Okay, But we're going to be beginning reading here um, from this book. What I have advanced in my previous chapters may have convinced my readers that there is good reason for believing that the despots of Europe are attempting by the spread of popery in this country to subvert its free institutions. Yet many may think that there are so many counteracting causes in the constitution of our society that this effort to bind us with the cast off chains of the bigotry and superstition of Europe cannot meet with success. And see, a lot of people today, our constitution doesn't allow Catholicism to do such. But when you got Maryland from 1632, yes, there were two Catholics that signed on the Constitution. And as we're going to see at this point over, this was like in the early 1800s when this book was written. At that time, the Jesuit presence was not openly as big as it is today. Okay, it wasn't. It wasn't. Okay? But you got to remember kind of remember that little part that little influencing thing here in America as we're going to see caused Catholicism to prosper because why Catholicism knew how, knows how because Catholicism is a political system not just a religious system it's a system that knows how to manipulate the politics of the country Trump 33rd, what, a 32 or 33rd degree Freemason, trained by Jesuits, smoking Joe, a Catholic, President Kamala Harris, trained by Jesuits, run by the guy in New York, the Jesuit in New York, the true head of this nation. Okay? I will, therefore, in the present chapter, consider some of the points in our political system of which advantage has already been taken to attack us by the wily enemies of our liberty. It is a beautiful feature in our Constitution, yes, that every man is left to worship God according to the dictates of his own conscience. Yes, the God of the Scriptures. The God of the Scriptures.
that the church is separated from the state and that equal protection is granted to all creeds and thus tolerating all sects. We have admitted to equal, pro equal protection not only those sects whose religious faith and practice support the principle on which the freedom, which the free toleration of all is founded, but also that unique, that solitary sect, the Catholic, which builds and supports its system on the destruction of all toleration. Word for word right there. See that? This was over a hundred years ago. Samuel Morris was warning us about the toleration of Catholicism. Yes, the Catholic is permitted to work in the light of Protestant toleration. Protestant. Protesting the abuses of Rome. To mature his plans and to execute his designs to extinguish that light and destroy the hands that hold it. Catholic being permitted to Th uh, to uh, thrive and flourish in this nation. But why? And to execute his designs to extinguish that light and to destroy the hands that hold it. To destroy America. Okay. Now we're skipping some. Okay. We're going to be reading primarily this where right here, this side here, where my finger is down. Okay. Okay. Oh, and what we already read, right here, okay? Okay, let's continue. Now we're skipping a little here. Let me not be charged with accusing the Catholics of the United States with intolerance. This, this shows, this is a dated work, but yet a very prominent work, because Samuel Morris was prophesying onto us the dangers of allowing Catholicism to reign. To be in this country. They are too small a body as yet fully to act out their principles at this time, yes, but nowadays, nowadays, especially the hundred years since this was written, America is a full-blown Jesuit nation. And their present conduct does not affect the general, general question in any way unless it may be to prove that they are not genuine and consistent Catholics. The conduct of a small insulated body under the restraints of the society around it is of no weight in deciding the character of the sect. Ah, at that time, you got to remember, while there are nations of the same infallible faith acting out its legitimate principles on control and producing fruits by which all may discern, without danger of mistake, the true nature of the tree. If popery is tolerant, let us see Italy, and Austria, and Spain, and Portugal open their doors to the teachers of the Protestant faith. Let these countries grant to Protestant missionaries as freely as we grant to Catholics. Would never happen. Leave to disseminate their doctrine through all classes in their, di in their di uh, dominions. Then may popery speak of toleration. Then may we believe that it has left, has, that it has felt the influence of the spirit of the age and has reformed. But then it will not be popery. For popery never changes. It is infallibly the same, infallibly intolerant. Now we're skipping a little bit here, okay? We're going to be reading this right here, which also leads over onto this page, okay? See? Pause it and read it. 
okay? <clears throat> All right. Foreign influence, then, cannot find its way into the country through any of the Protestant sects at that time. But you got to remember, also at that time, that the Jesuit was busy infiltrating. Uh, you read the works of James Atkin Weill, or, yeah, James Atkin Weill, about how they were trained to be uh, Calvinists, Lutherans, and whatever, to infiltrate and even teach the doctrines of those denominations, okay? You got to remember that. The infiltrating was already underway, not as it is today where Catholicism controls every denomination. And that happened in 1984 when Reagan stood before an obelisk and was sworn in. That was a sign on to all the Jesuits across the world that all the denominations in America were overtaken. That's what uh, Brother Alberto Rivera said. Okay? I believe it. Okay? But at this time, okay, you got to remember, this is dated, but yet what Samuel Morris is warning about, we are seeing what has happened. But yet he gave warning against it. Okay? In this respect, Catholics stand alone. They are already the most powerful and dangerous sect in the country. Yes, they are. And they're the ruling sect today. Allowing this illusion of religious liberty while preaching ecumenicalism within the Christian churches. Or toleration. Or, oh, it's not, Rome isn't Babylon, America is Babylon, like Stephen Anderson does. Okay? For they are not confined to their schemes and means like other sects to our own borders, but they work with the minds and the funds of all the despotic of all despotic Europe. Now let, we're skipping here a little bit and we're going to be reading from right here from right here right here that's what we're going to be reading. Okay. Catholics have boasted that they can play off one sect against another. Yes, the Hegelian principle. Uh, putting Baptists versus Lutherans and blah, blah, blah. Just like they did with World War versus Wade. Now, abortion, instead of it being a blanket across the nation, abortion is illegal. It's left up to the states to destroy one another. For in the petty controversies that divide the contending parties. Right there. Right there. Catholics have boasted that they can play off one sect against another for in the petty controversies that divide the contending parties. The pliable conscience of the Jesuit enables him to throw the weight of his influence on either side. Play both sides. Play the one, both sides to control the outcome. The Hegelian principle. Okay? Work to one side, the other side, you control the outcome. Men on both sides. See. And as his interest may be, the command of his superiors, and the alleged good of the church, that is, the power of the priesthood, being paramount to all other considerations. Yeah. Uh, the priest, the Catholic is taught to look at the priest as another Christ. Because that priest has the power to call God into the little wafer cookie and to turn woody, woody, woody by transubstantiation the water and the, uh, the wine and the actual blood. And Catholics actually believe that. Yeah. This pliability of conscience so advantageous, advent, advantageous to building up any system of oppression religious or political, presents us with strangely contradictory alliances. Yeah, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. You see that. You know, people who are sworn enemies against some of my enemies are willing to uplift my enemies because they hate me. 
See, there these these people's alliance is not the love of truth, but of hate of the truth. See, that's what binds them together, like the English and the Canadian people. You know, speaking of a select few, their allegiance is to each other of hatred of truth, not of the love of the truth. Okay, yeah. Uh, in Europe, popery supports the most ham the most high-handed despotism lends its thunders to all the people into the most abject obedience and maintains at the top of its creed the indissolvable union of church and state. And interesting, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes to rule and reign on the earth, where is going to be religious liberty then? Wrestle that one around in your head a little bit. Well, in this country, where it is yet feeling its way, oh, how consistent, it has allied itself with the democracy of the land. It is loudest in its denunciations of tyranny, the tyranny of American patriots. It is first to sent out, it is first to sent out oppression. S-C-E-N-T. Sees afar off the machinations of the Native American Protestants to unite church and state and puts itself forth the most zealous guardian of civil and religious liberty. With such sentinels, surely our liberties are safe. With such guardians of our rights, we may sleep in peace. Another weak point in our system is our laws. Encouraging immigration and affording facilities to naturalization. In the early state of the country, liberality in these points was thought to be of an advantage as it promoted the cultivation cultivization of our wild lands. But the dangers which now threaten our free institutions from this source more than balance all advantages of this character. Yes. Because like I said earlier, these Jesuit priests, these people working for the Vatican come into America to sow discord. you got to make sure that their rights are more protected than someone that is home-born. Hey, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong that an immigrant from another nation doesn't have more rights than someone that is homeborn. Show me, prove me wrong that our Jesuit nation won't bend over backwards for someone who doesn't even know the language of the country. Bend over backwards for them. But someone who is homeless needing in this nation. they got to jump through a whole bunch of ringers and be denied and all this kind of stuff. You prove me wrong. Why? Because our immigration is set that way to allow the enemy into our country free access to destroy it. Okay? And while he said here uh, in the earlier chapter with guardians such a with such guardians of our rights, we may sleep in peace. <laughs> yeah, those so-called guardians of our rights, where are they? Oh, they're promoting Catholicism themselves, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. All right. The great body of immigrants in this country, to this country, are the hard-working, mentally negligent poor of Catholic countries in Europe. And this is true. Why? Because most Catholics, they're, they're scripturally ignorant. They are scripturally in, illiterate. Why? Because Catholicism, number one, gives them a Bible, not the scriptures. The authorized version of the scriptures is the most hated book by the Catholics. Even the Jesuits themselves, in Leone's book, mentions that, okay? The Jesuits uh, love flesh and hate scripture, okay? That will be in the description box, okay? 
But see, the Catholic is not. Even it's like yes, you should read your Bible. Yes, your Bible. Yes, but you you need to get a book, or the the uh, Catechism, in order for you to understand what you're reading. Why? Because they don't have the Holy Ghost who will guide them into all truth. So of course they need their priest class to teach them. Priests coming over from other nations, untouched, unspoiled. Here's America. Who have left a land where they were enslaved for one of freedom. The Catholics from other nations come here, yes. However well disposed they may be to the country which protects them and adopts them as citizens, they are not fitted to act with judgment in the political affairs of their new country, like native citizens, educated from their infancy in the principles and habits of our institutions. Most of them are too ignorant to act at all for themselves and except they be guided wholly by others. Yes. Yes. Catholic disloyalty. Catholics don't have a mind for themselves. The Jesuits, act cadaver. They're a mindless sword in the hand of their provincial. They're, they're brilliant men, but they don't think for themselves. They can't think for themselves. The Jesuits at war and without will. They have a will given to them by their superiors. The Catholics are told what to believe, okay, by their priests. They don't have the spirit. They don't have, they have no idea of true liberty of conscience to worship the God of the scriptures. No, no. Let's continue here. These others of, are, of course, the, their priests. Their priests. I gotta go to the priest. I gotta go to the priest so he can tell me what their Bibles say. I gotta go to my pastor. Instead of um, getting on your knees and it's like, Lord, open to me your scriptures. Tell me the truth of your word. Uh, expound to me. No, no. You go to you go to a commentary that you pay almost a hundred bucks for. To a, a group of bloodthirsty Baptists. Okay? Or you go get a book. Written by a man to help you understand something when you got the scriptures right here to, to tell you it. Priests have ruled them at home by divine right. Yeah. Their ignorant minds cannot ordinarily be emancipated from their habitual subjection. That's why when it comes to Catholics, you really got to take the sword of the spirit and bash them over the head sometimes really do because they are brainwashed just like with jehos you know jehos when you speak to a jeho from the scriptures they look off to the one side because they're remembering their programming that they were programmed with okay have you never witnessed to a jeho through the scriptures before they will not learn nor appreciate their exemption from any such usurpation of priestly power in this country and they are implicitly at the beck of their spiritual guides. They live surrounded by freedom. Yet liberty of conscience, right of private judgment, whether in religion or politics, as are as effectually excluded by the priests. As if the code of Austria already ruled the land, they form a body of men whose habits of action, for I cannot say thought, for I cannot say thought, are opposed to the principles of our free institutions. For as they are not accessible to the reasonings of the press, they cannot and do not think for themselves. And that's true about these coadjutors. They think uh, by themselves in ways to do mischief, which we already read in the scriptures. But they can't think for themselves. They're programmed, they're machines, they're robots. Yeah, right here. Yet from the nature of things, they are but obedient instruments in the hands of their more knowing leaders to accomplish the designs of their foreign masters. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then with immigration, immigration, okay? Here we're reading a little bit. Here, uh, pause and read this. We're going to look at some of the highlighted stuff. About immigration, okay? We have seen that the nature of the case, that immigrant Catholics generally are shamefully illiterate and without opinions of their own. They are and must be under the direction of their priests. And is that not what is being taught in Christian church buildings today? Got to go to your pastor, right? Got to go to the MacArthur commentary or the Ruckman commentary. When you have the scriptures before you, Okay, there's, okay, there's, let me, let me be clear. There's nothing wrong with going to a, a reference work of man to reference. But if you are using those reference works as your authority to define scripture, and not the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is that spirit himself, that's a problem. That's a little idolatry that you got going on there. That's when you truly become an it. Uh, you know? Here is a large body of ignorant men brought into our community who are unapproachable by any of the ordinary means of, enlightened, of enlightening the people. A body of men who severely, who severe, severely, excuse me, obey a set of principles imported from abroad, bound to the country by none of the usual ties, owing allegiance, allegiance and service to a foreign government. And we talk about that in another video. Um, uh, uh, Catholic Jesuit disloyalty. Which will be in the description box. See, the Catholic is first a citizen to who? To America? No, to Rome. You're a Catholic? You're a citizen of Rome. That's your first allegiance. And your allegiance is first to Sosa, the Pope. Not to Kamala Harris or Smoking Joe. Obviously. Depending on that government for promotion and renew reward, and this reward too, depends on the manner in which they discharge the duties prescribed to them by their foreign masters, which is, doubtless for the present, to confine themselves simply and wholly to increasing the number of their sect and the influence of the Pope in this country. And that's what has happened. It started with the likes of Maryland. And we blew it from the beginning because we allowed Catholicism in here. <laughs> right here. The Jesuits are fully aware of the advantage they derive from this circumstance. What circumstance is this? That freedom of religion. And that the immigration is set so that coming into this country, especially if you're a Jesuit or a Catholic, yeah, you have more rights as an immigrant than someone who is homeborn. Prove me wrong. Unless, unless of course, you got the greenbacks, the money. You got your 40,000 reasons to smile, you scumbag. Okay? <laughs> They know that a body of men admitted to citizenship, unlearned in the true nature of American liberty, exercising the elective franchise, totally uninfluenced by the ordinary method, methods of reasoning, but passively obedient only to the commands of their priests, must give those priests great conscience in the eyes of the leaders of political parties. They know that these leaders must esteem it very important that the priests be propitiated. And look at that uh, dinner where Trump and Biden got together by that one Catholic priest who held both their hands with a big smile on his face. I forget what that, uh, that dinner is called. But the Catholics, you know it. Trump and Biden, Smoking Joe, His Holiness, uh, <laughs> His Holiness Mr. Trump, between a Catholic, big smile, it's like, people, wake up, wake up. This is why, 
America as a nation is done for. Okay? And how is a Catholic priest to be propitiated? How? But stipulating for that which will increase his power, or the power of the church. For be it always borne in mind that they are identical. The Roman church is the body of priests and prelates. The laity have only to obey and to pay, not to exercise authority. Obey, consume, and conform. While your priest class rules over you. While your pastor, while your online pastor, yeah, rules over you. Yes, <laughs> surely there is great danger to our present institutions from this source. And men as skillful as the Jesuits, as are the Jesuits, we may be sure will not fail to use the power thus thrown into their hands to work great mischief to the Republic. Yes, yes. Thus, we have among us a body of men, a religious sect who can exercise a direct controlling influence in the politics of the country and can be moved together in a solid phalanx. We have a church interfering directly and most powerfully in the affairs of state. This was written over a hundred years ago, guys. Warning us of Catholicism. And look at what happens. Look at today. Look at today. Look at today. There's a Catholic church. Well, it's a Lutheran church, but the same thing. There's a Catholic church right, not even a block away from me. St. Mary's of Woodstock. In Harvard, there's a Catholic church everywhere. You know them because they're their phallus on the top of them. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. But yes, right there. And it began all the way back as early as 1632. Maryland. A land for persecuted Catholics. And as we have seen, they're the ones doing the persecuting. God bless America. We celebrate our independence today, right? Independence Day, which is nothing more for an excuse for men to, uh, to be gluttonous and to get drunk and to fornicate and to shoot off fireworks. That's it. What are we independent from? We're not. We're not independent. We are controlled. This nation is controlled by the Roman Catholic Church, the Jesuits. And then you get people like that Phil Robinson moron talking about, you know, oh, America, if we would just love America, make America great again. People. 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 Come on. What? What? Is there something wrong with you? There is something wrong with you, isn't there? You have that American dream. It's the American dream because unless you are a Catholic, unless you have the money, unless you are or something, you know, unless you are in the esoteric crowd and have the money. What are you? You're sheep. There for the slaughter. You're there to make the rich richer. And this thing with Roe versus Wade, leaving it up to the states, instead of saying outright it's illegal, never mind, which would have been which would have been good, but see they left it up to the states. Illinois is a horrible state. California is worse. Unfortunately. And I know brethren in California, sorry, to cause strife, conflict. America from the beginning, dear friends, 
<laughs> America from the beginning has been from the beginning of America her death warrant was sealed the minute we allowed popery into our mists. And to get rid of him nowadays is impossible. It's impossible. You hear people about talking about a big revival coming. Oh, a revival pointed toward the little G-God of this world. I believe that will come. But a revival returning onto the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, and to the God of the scriptures, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, people. You think for one second that Napoleon, Trump, because the Jesuits, I believe, are going to do with uh, Trump as they did with Napoleon. That will be in the description box. Watch the video, okay? I believe that the Jesuits are going to use Trump like they used Napoleon to destroy these people who are patriots for our country but yet are putting their, their faith on Donald Trump When there's no way, there's no way, brethren, people, there's no way that America can be revived. There's no way. There's no, there's no way. There's no way. Okay, now hold on one second. All right. Now we're going to read a little here. And, and this um, uh, chapter here, this is the chapter where it talks about the Jesuits and they're meddling with the politics here. We're just going to read this, this portion right here, this yellow portion right there where my hand is. Okay, then we are going to read from right here where my finger is to right here. Then we're going to be done with this book and then we got scriptures to read, okay? But check this out. To any such inquirers, let me say that there are many ways in which a body, which a body organized as are the Catholics, and moving in concert, might disturb, to use the mildest term, the good order of the Republic, and thus compel us to present to observing Europe the spectacle of Republican anarchy. Who is not aware that a great portion of that stuff which composes a mob. <laughs> I, I'm thinking about uh, uh, An Enemy Hath Done This, a video where uh, I start out with the uh, clip from the movie Gladiator, which I like to alter. Uh, America is the mob. Conjure magic for us. And we will be distracted. Take away our freedom. And instill our sports... The Jesuits will give America death. No, the Jesuits will give America entertainment. And the people will love them for it. America is the mob. Sit a, sit a TV in front of them or get them on a cell phone. How many times you go walking and you see people like this? Everywhere. 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 Their hands planted to their head, you know, their eyes planted to their hands in their cell phones. America is the mob. Ripe for riot or excess of any kind. Hey, the way America is right now, look at the Black Lives Matter things that was started by, uh, what was his name, Soros, the traitor to his people who uh, served Nazi Germany. I believe that was Soros. I believe that was Soros. I might have that wrong. But again, look at Black Lives Matter. How like a powder keg waiting to explode that exploded onto the scene. And all America fell for it. And what's the next thing? Hmm? See, America is swayed by whatever the Jesuit-controlled media tells us to believe. Yeah. And you, think, you think that Trump, electing Trump, is going to fix all this. It's, it's impossible. It's impossible. Okay? Yes. Right for riot or excess of any kind, and of which we have every week or two a fresh example in some part of the country. 
is a Catholic population. Yeah. And what makes it turbulent? Ignorance. An ignorance which it is for the interest of its leaders not to enlighten. Well, you might say, well, there's education, education, education. Yes, education controlled by the Jesuit order, teaching evolution in schools, will not have the scriptures as a textbook. Yes, yes, telling you that the Civil War, that there wasn't a religious aspect to it, uh, saying that Hitler was an atheist and not working for the Vatican. Hi, you know, how many of the kids today can name one concentration camp? Some can, praise the Lord. Yeah, the answer is an education. Yeah, knowledge has increased. People are so educated beyond their own intelligence that they're willing to believe that you came out of the water from a sniveling piece of snot over a billion years ago. That's stupid. That's education. That's education. That's your American dream, Jack. That's your American dream. You're dreaming. Unless you got the money. Unless you're part of that esoteric crowd. Yeah. Yes. And what makes it turbulent? Ignorance. Ignorance of who? Ignorance of what? The Lord Jesus Christ, the true God, our Father. And ignorance of what? The scriptures. Prove it. Okay. Look at the Bibles. Look at the Bibles. People attack me on this all the time. Okay? See, this says Holy Bible, but the, within the, the pages of Scripture, it doesn't refer to it as the Bible. Okay? Okay? All right? People attack me on this all the time. I'm all about distinction. Okay? I'm all about distinction. That's the Scriptures. Those are Bibles. And ignorance is by, yea, hath God said, all the Bibles. People don't know who God is. God is whoever they want him to be. Not who, as he actually is. Yes. Yes. Ignorance. And ignorance which is for the interest of its leaders not to enlighten. For enlighten a man and he will think for himself. And have some self-respect. He will understand the laws. And know his interests in obeying them. Keep him in ignorance and he is a slave of the man who will flatter his passions and appetites or awe him with superstitious fears. Catholic, 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 Catholic. Okay? Catholic. All right. Now the next one. And then we're going to be done with this book because we've got some scriptures we've got to go through. It is unnecessary to multiply facts of this nature. Nor will it be objected that these instances are unworthy of notice, because their local or subscribed character. Surely, American Protestants, freemen, have discernment enough to discover beneath them the cloven foot of this subtle foreign heresy. And at one time, yes, remember, this book is over a hundred years old, but today, no. No. Today, it is brazen. It is blatant today. And people don't have enough to discern it today. They don't. They don't. They're more valiant against the truth than for the truth. And this is truth, boy. This is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The authorized version. And will not wait for more extensive, disastrous, and overwhelming political inference and interference ere they assume the attitude of watchfulness and defense. Hmm. Consider what Morse just said here. He was giving credence to a people at that time that once they were made aware of the evils of Catholicism, that they would do something about it. But what happened? What has happened? Catholicism has won in America. And a people like this today does not exist. There are people like this, yes! But in a general, overall sense, 
This, surely, American Protestants, freemen, have discernment enough to discover beneath them the cloven foot of this uh, subtle foreign heresy? What is that? The priests play a rule by their means, and the people love to have it so. Because the Jesuits give you what you want your entertainment, your pharmacia, your bad food. They will give us entertainment. And America will love it, love them for it. They will see that popery is now what it has ever been, a system of the darkest political intrigue and despotism, cloaking itself to avoid attack under the sacred name of religion. They will deeply impress with the truth that popery is a political as well as a religious system, temporal and spiritual, spiritual and temporal, Temporal, meaning things of the world. Spiritual, meaning Sosa has the power to put you into heaven or hell. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. That in this respect, it differs totally from all other sects. Yes. From all other forms of religion in the country, popery embodies in itself the closest union of church and state. Observe it at the fountainhead in the Roman states, the civil and ecclesiastical offices are blended together in the same individual. The Pope is a king, a cardinal is a secretary of state, the consistory of cardinals is the cabinet council, the ministry, and they are viceroys in the provinces. The archbishops are ambassadors to foreign courts, the bishops are judges and magistrates, and the road to preferment to most, if not all the great offices of state, is through the priesthood. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, uh, Catholics had more right to refuse the steal of the Jesuit poignard. Ca uh, poignard. Catholic soldiers had more right to refuse that than others. Foreign, an immigrant Catholic, especially, especially, has more rights than someone homeborn. Prove me wrong. Does not our nation bend over backwards to those immigrants using our very system as a weapon against us? Oh, but the the people, the the silly, the um, ignorant. We'll go to Second Chronicles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Second Chronicles. Yeah. Yeah. And, and where do they go to? They go to verse 14. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways... Then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Hmm. There, there's something in there. Um, turn from their wicked ways. Hmm. America as a whole, as a nation. And not we're, as a nation, we're not going to turn from our wicked ways. We here in America. I am, an, I am an American. I am in America. My nation here is a Jesuit nation. And this nation is not going to turn from its wickedness. And you know, you read the context here, oh, dear friend, of Second Chronicles chapter 7. You look at what Solomon gave, okay? Let's look at that. Let's read now verses 3 on to verse 13. And all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house. They bestowed themselves. They bowed themselves, excuse me, with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Now, check this out. This is what Solomon sacrificed. Okay? And who is willing to sacrifice of themselves that this nation might turn around? 
Yeah. yeah. I'd like to see Mr. Duck Commander shell out of his own pocket for uh, people to come to the true Christ of the Scriptures. But then again, he's a water dog. He believes that you got to get baptized in water. Yeah. Yeah. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God, sacrificed. Who is willing to sacrifice today? Oh, they are little excess. Like, you know, oh, they've made so much, so we'll put a little pittance in there. And like our Lord said of the woman who put in the two uh, mites, you know, all those guys put in because of their excess. But that little widow woman over there, she put in more than all they. Yeah. Yeah. It's like these people who give to you so they can use it as a tax write-off. When they're 501c3 church buildings. Or they donate to a ministry or whatever with the intent that they will mark it off on their taxes as charitable giving so they get it back. You people. Oh. And the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also with instruments of music of the Lord. Music with K. Which David the king had made to praise the Lord because his merciful, because his mercies, because his mercy endureth forever. When David praised by their ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon, Solomon hollowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings. Because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat. Also at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days and all Israel with him. A very great com congregation from the entering in of Hamath onto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly. For they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. Yeah, and people complain. It's like, well, Brad, your you know your videos are two and a half hours on average. Who has time, right? Yeah, yeah. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord had shewed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord, and in his own house he prosperly effected. Hmm. Now who in America is willing to dedicate to sacrifice as that? Very few. Very few, if any. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, now this doctrinally is for the Jewish people, but you see so many of these people, American patriots, will come to this and try to take this. This is a promise for Israel, not for America. Not for America. Okay? If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. But you have to return from your wicked ways. And it began with sacrifice. And Americans in themselves... Very greedy and not willing to, not in my backyard, or give of their excess so they can write it off on their taxes. Or, I've, I've seen this, people taking selfies of themselves giving things to homeless people. Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8. And with the people like this, Jeremiah chapter 8. Verses 7 on to verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 8. Hmm. Verse 7 on to verse 10. Yeah. Yea, 
The stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. Again, doctrinally, this is for the children of Israel. But our instruction in righteousness, America knows nothing about the true God of the scriptures. Only what people like, you know, their church building, David Jeremiah, uh, uh, John MacArthur, uh, uh, what's that guy, um, uh, Comfort, Washer, Bocham, okay, uh, Kim, and all these other, and Robert Breaker, and these guys, and stuff like that. True, Rockmanites, those two guys are. True, okay. America knows nothing of the true God. Then America knows nothing. But yet, education is glory in the country, but America, no, Americans know nothing. And the people love to have it so. They want to be told what to think. Aren't you, aren't you planted, most of you lost people, aren't you planted in front of that television? Soaking that in, right, man? How do ye say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, led by your senses, devilish. What wisdom is in you? What fear? What fear? Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. What wisdom is in these people? What wisdom is in Americans? Fear of man. Because they're controlled by the priests. Therefore, will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness. From the prophet, even unto the priest, Everyone dealeth falsely. And uh, where, where, where is that? Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 30 and 31. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. I mean, look here on YouTube and all these lying, charismatic devils. You know, prosperity gospel like uh, um, Copeland and uh, uh, God Unlimited, that wicked woman, uh, whatever her ministry was called, I forget. And it's, 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 yeah, yeah. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. Peace, peace. God loves you. God wants to bless you. <laughs> yeah. And the priests bear rule by their means. My people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? What are you going to do in the end thereof? You're going to go to hell. That's what you're going to do. Man. And Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. Verses 10 on to verse 20. Hmm. Therefore. O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away, pine away in them, how should we then live? Mm -hmm. Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He doesn't. But that the wicked turn from his way and live. Repent. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? Again, doctrinally, this is for Israel. But our instruction in righteousness, is America as a nation willing to turn from all its evil? No. We're done. But what about you, personally, individually? Hmm? Therein, the individual, dear brethren, people, individually. America as a nation is done for. America as a nation has been infiltrated by Catholicism and is controlled by the Roman Catholic Church, the Jesuit order. Okay? America ever being great never was to begin with. America returning to it's never going to happen. But individually, the individual, 
the person, spirit's own body, that's where the difference is to be made. Because a grand revival of returning to truth ain't going to happen. But a revival turning to that man of sin, the son of perdition, oh yeah, that's coming. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. Now you got to remember, what Ezekiel is saying here is being said under the context of the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. You notice this is all works. Okay? You notice that. This doctrinally does not apply for us today. Okay? This is how it was under the law. Because on, under the law, there was no eternal security. There was no permanent seal of the Holy Ghost like there is today. Once saved, always saved was not under the law. Okay? It wasn't there. you got to remember that. We are looking at this for our instruction in righteousness, not doctrine. There's a big difference. Okay? So let's continue. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trust in his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. Note, lawful and right, showing you what dispensation this is for. If the wicked restore the pledge, these are all works. Give again that he had robbed. Walk in the statutes of life. Without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins, again, talking about works here, none of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him, for he hath done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say, The way of the Lord is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. It's not fair for the Lord God to hate the sin that I'm doing in my life. His way is equal. Your way is unequal. You're choosing what he hates, dear man, dear woman. When the righteous turneth from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, he shall even die thereby. For the wages of sin is death. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. O oh, ye house of Israel, I will judge you everyone after his ways. See, individually. The Old Testament is how the Lord dealt with nations. The New Testament is primarily how he deals individually with people, with a person, spirit's own body. Okay? Okay? But what happens here in America? See, these people are not valiant for the truth. But they are valiant for they they call evil good and good evil. And when you got someone preaching the true gospel, the true Jesus Christ from the scriptures and not a Bible, oh Amos five, verse ten, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. You want to hear God loves you. That elect Trump and Trump will make America great again. You're insane. You're insane. Donald Trump is working for the Jesuit order. Okay? And personally, I believe that Trump is going to be used as Napoleon. Again, check out the video. Okay? And if Trump does regain the presidency, there's a good chance he might. Um, he's going to do far worse than ever before. Personally, I think that the Jesuits, because Smoking Joe, he's... he's he, I don't think he's going to be reelected. I could be wrong. We don't know. I personally believe that it's going to be, in the end, for president, Donald Trump, Kamala Harris. That's what I believe. Because remember, the Jesuits put the nimbus around um, uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, they're, they're, they got a plan for that evil woman to be the first uh, black woman president of America. Yeah. That's what I think. That's what I think. Okay? But see, 
we here, now we as the church of the living God, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. There are those out there that's like, well, Brad, you're saying that America is never going to be turned around. That America is done for. But we're to pray for these people. We're to... 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14 on to verse 23. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 14 on to verse 23. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Amen. Amen. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body, that's a person, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So see, Brad, we're supposed to pray for all things. And we're supposed to pray for our government. Yes, aren't we? Yes, let's look at that. Let's look at that. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 6. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So we're supposed to pray for... Uh, smoking Joe and Kamala Harris. Really? Okay. For kings and for all that are in authority. Why though? Why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Ooh. More on this verse in a second. Let's keep reading to, to verse 6. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men, Mr. Calvin, will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, not Mary, not your priest, not your pastor, okay? Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So see, we're supposed to pray for Joe Biden, really. He's a traitor. He serves the Vatican. His heart is fixed. He's going to hell. He is set, he and Kamala Harris are in power, allotted by the Lord, yes, for judgment upon this nation. And we're to pray for that. Hmm. Look at verse 2. Okay. It says, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. But why are we praying for that? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Hmm. Peaceable, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. I'm not being quiet right now, am I? No, I'm speaking against this nation. I am. Because it's a Catholic nation. But see... That we may lead a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Why are we doing that? Acts chapter 17. See, we are to pray for the kings and rulers and stuff of our nation that we may live a godly life. But why? Acts chapter 17, verses 31, 30 on to verse 31. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth all men, Mr. Calvin, everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. Okay? God has commanded wants all men to come to repentance, turning from themselves and turning unto him. Okay? Okay? So, we as the church of the living God, to live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and all honesty, hence, 
living according our, li our lives according to the scriptures, being a witness unto those. See, that's why we pray to the government for the, those in government. So that we may live our life according to scripture, that we may be a witness unto these people. That's why. Okay? That's why. And uh, now go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Come on, fingers, work with me. 1 <laughs> Thessalonians chapter 4. We want the first 12 verses. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. And we are to pray for our government that we may lead a life, that we may walk according to the scriptures, that we may be a witness unto the lost. That's why we are praying to government. That's why we are praying to government. Excuse me. Praying for government. Excuse me. Praying for government. Okay. But when our government is in the back pocket of the Jesuits and have already made their choice to destroy and to betray this nation, what good is it to pray for Smoking Joe? He's our enemy. What good is it to pray for Kamala Harris? She's, she's a Jesuit. Let us to pray for Donald Trump. He's going to betray us. For you know that what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God, to love one another. Love one another is in context of the church of the living God. There are those who are of the church of the living God, my brothers, who I don't like them and they don't like me. But if they came to me in need, if I could, I would help them or pray for them. I would. But see, this love that the Christianity is telling you, that's a totally different love. Okay? One, let's keep reading. Okay? And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Brethren, those who are saved, those who are born again, converted of the church of the living God, okay? And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without. Being a witness unto them. That's why we are to pray for our leaders in government. That we may walk unabashed. Unhindered. According to the scriptures in this society. But if you go around preaching the true Jesus Christ. Oh. That's more to be shunned. Than that religion of Antichrist. That is, going, that is being preached. That religion of Antichrist that is being preached in the church buildings. Non-dispensational Catholic mess is what that is being preached in the church buildings. Okay, And of course, this, this all goes into Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. You ought to know this by heart. Okay? I beseech you, therefore... Brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are we proving that to? Proving that to the, to the lost world. 
by the way we are living and adhering our lives to the scriptures. On an individual basis, dear brethren. Okay? And go to Colossians chapter 4. Go to Colossians chapter 4. Okay? Colossians chapter 4. Verses 2 on to verse 6. So, yes, continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance. To speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. See, we are to pray for our government that we may be witnesses unhindered unto the lost. Okay? And not have a supp oppressive government that wants to censor us because we are speaking the truth of Scripture or exposing the works of the Satanic Catholic Jesuit order. Okay? That's why we are to pray for those in government. That we may have an unhindered chance of witness. Unhindered from a Jesuit-controlled government who wants to censor us. Walk in wisdom, the fear of the Lord, toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Yes, you need to, if you're out there, you need, you're an ambassador for Christ. You are a witness for Christ. You need to be a witness for Christ. Okay? And see, this was something from the beginning in uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. See, we are in the midst of a perverse nation, America, amongst the lost, okay? Hence, it was also similar in the book of Deuteronomy for the children of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 6 under verse 10. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Atheists, lost people, have contacted me about the Christians. It's if the, the Christianity is a joke onto the lost, onto atheists. Because Christianity is basically being as the world to win the world. Okay? But see, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints is a separation, is a distinction. So that people of the world be like, wow, okay, you 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 are you you bit my head off when I called you a Christian. Okay? Those Christians, they're just like me, but you're of this the church of the living God? They're different. They're different. Not by works of what we do, no. Because the Lord that dwells within us, guiding us through the scriptures to live according to the scriptures in their presence. Yes, let's continue. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Handing down the faith once delivered unto the saints, unto the next generation. But that faith that is being delivered today is that faith of that religion, of that man of sin, the son of perdition. That religion of Antichrist. Not the Antichrist. That religion of Antichrist, which is against and a replacement thereof. That's what Antichrist means. But see children of Israel, as Israel, were called to be a separate nation, to be an example unto the other nations of how God is, of him being, of their, them being their people. For us today, the church of the living God, we are called to that very thing. Okay? We are called to that very thing. Okay? And 
And this thing about this love, okay? We are to love one another. Love one another who are saved. And a love that we show to the lost is preaching them the truth of the scriptures. Giving them the gospel. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection and the blood shed on the cross for the remission of sins. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The gospel for today. Okay? We show love unto the lost by telling them the truth. That's how we love our enemies. But see, every time, man, and see, again, like I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, okay, in the very beginning, this love thing, they go ahead and they twist love. And they say that love is not telling people their sins. Don't judge me. Like I said, you look in that video, Mark the Mess, the Mark the Mess of Satan, um, you'll see it. Don't judge. You're judging. It's just like, shut your mouth. We're supposed to judge according to the scriptures. We are. We're to judge ourselves and to judge others according to the scriptures. The judgment is hypocritical judgment. And see, these Christians, don't judge me. You, we're not to judge other people. They're doing that to defend themselves. Okay? One second. Yes, remember about uh, Deuteronomy 18 verses 9 on to verse 14? When uh, it says, when they go into the uh, land that they are to possess, there shall not be found among them. Deuteronomy uh, 18, verses 10 on to verse 14, we're reading. There shall, not, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter of familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord God hath not suffered thee to do so. But see, we already read, God has called all men everywhere to repent. At times of this ignorance, he winked at. But now he's calling everyone to repent, to come to the true God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? But see, we show love unto our enemies by telling them the truth, by giving them scripture, sharing with them the gospel. Either through scripture, obviously, the way to go, or if they don't want to hear it, by how we behave. Okay? But see, the love they preach, always, every single time, is a self-defense move. Because the scripture calls you out. The scripture rebukes you of your sin. The scripture will cut you. Okay? And then you got someone who will, don't judge. And what do they do? Oh, what do they do? What do they do? You know, everybody basically knows what John 3.16 is. Another one that is just as popular, Matthew chapter 7, which is for the time of the kingdom of heaven, by the way. But judge not that ye be not judged. Yeah. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote in thy uh, brother's eye? But considerest not the beam in thine own eye. See, you have a moat in your eye. You can't judge anyone. Keep reading. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the moat of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye. Then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. What does that mean? Hypocritical judgment. If I were still a practicing sodomite and I were to go to preach to sodomites about how God hates sodomy and yet I was a sodomite, oh, that's the kind of judgment that's being talked against. If I was a raging alcoholic and talking to you about drinking alcohol, that would be hypocritical judgment. If I were a cigarette smoker and saying to you, give up them nasty, vile, stinking, rotten, cancer-causing, death-causing cigarettes, but yet I'm smoking cigarettes, I would be a hypocrite. 
hypocritical judgment has been what's talked here. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Not that we're not supposed to judge. We are supposed to judge righteously according to the scriptures. Okay? And look, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither yet cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Like it says in Revelation, what is that? Uh, uh, what is that? Revelation 21 or Revelation 22. Okay? Revelation chapter 22. Unfortunately, i got to be mindful of the time now. Revelation chapter 22. What does it say there? And, uh, oh. Uh, verse 11, Revelation chapter 22. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And our Lord himself even mentions in Matthew chapter 15... And Matthew chapter 15, you know, Matthew chapter 15, what is that, verse 14? Matthew 15, verse 14? Hmm. Verses 13 and 14. But he answered and said, Every plant which my father, heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. If any man is going to be ignorant, let them be ignorant. Let the unjust be unjust still, and let the holy be holy still. See, our job as the Church of the Living God, as ambassadors for Christ, is to present the gospel through the scriptures unto the lost by preaching, teaching, whatever, and by our daily walk. And if they don't want to accept that or hear that, then let them alone. Don't cast your pearls before swine. And see, people who immediately put up the dukes to say, well, don't judge me. They do it to defend their sin and to defend their sinful actions. Or to defend a heretic who they happen to like and they think he's their friend. Yeah. And of course, of course, you know, Paul talks about uh, this in Romans chapter 2, which must be mentioned. Romans chapter 2. Because it's pertinent for this dispensation as well. Some of you might to be um, uh, combative. It's like, well, Brad, you're dispensational. That was just for the kingdom of heaven, right? Uh, uh, Paul talked the same thing, crossing dispensational lines, not to have hypocritical judgment. Uh, Romans chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 24. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a, a guide to the blind, of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a, teachers of ba a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, thus thou steal. Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? <laughs> yeah. Thou that makest the, thy boast of the law, through breaking the law dishonorest thou God, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. Hypocritical judgment. We are to judge. We are to judge according to the scriptures. And see, we are to pray for our government, not to our government, excuse me, but for our government, that we may live our lives in, a, in fulfillment of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is why we are to pray for our nation, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verses 11 on to verse 21. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. 
For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. They put on the facade. They're a Christian. Oh, look at me. But in heart, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hence, brethren, people, individually, individually, as a nation, as a populace, as a people, as a country, America is in no way going to return unto the true God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, unto the authorized version of the scriptures. Catholicism rules this nation. It's not going to happen. But see, we pray, Lord, please keep the Jesuits away from us so that we may be ambassadors for you unto the lost outside our door here online, that we may be your witnesses and testify of you. Please, Lord, keep the government off our back so that we may do this. See, it's individually, not corporately. And a lot of these church buildings ta teach about corporate this and corporate that. It's not going to happen. It's an individual, mano y mano thing. The only chance and hope for anyone here in America. Because America is not going to be saved. Because America is a Jesuit nation. And we as the Church of God, like I said at the beginning, I don't make any bones about it. I am anti-Catholic. I am. I am anti-Catholic. If you are a Catholic, I do not hate you. You as a person, spirit, soul, and body, I hate your religion. Because your religion has destroyed this country, and your religion is the religion of Satan. But we, as the Church of the Living God, and a lot of people who are actually saved, born again, converted, have a problem with this. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Mem. Verses 103 and 104. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts, the scriptures, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. And also, in Psalm 119, Psalm 119 in A.N., verses 127 and verse 128, <laughs> Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14. We want verses 12 on to verse 21. Ezekiel chapter 14. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out mine hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. And the famine is coming. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, 
Pay attention to this. They should deliver their, but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the, saith the Lord God. Individually. Individual. Not national. Individual. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in this very nation of America, them being here isn't going to save America. Just like Lot was in, um, in Sodom. Him being there didn't save Sodom, did it? No. That's the, the redemption of the purchased possession. We're going to be taken out before God's judgment falls on this earth. But see, this is talking about individualism. About not individualism, but individual salvation. This nation coming to the Christ of the Scriptures, the authorized version, the true gospel, the true God, our Father Jesus Christ, ain't going to happen no matter who the Jesuits put in who you think you put in the office. It's not going to happen. But you living your life according to the scriptures in these times on an individual basis, that is possible. And that's what we are to strive for, brethren. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it, so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through, that no man may pass through because of the beasts. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Or if I bring a sword upon that land, and say, sword, go through the land, so that I cut off man and beast from it, Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Individuality. Individual salvation. Not salvation to a nation. Because America is desolate. America is done. America as a whole cannot be re reached. Cannot be made great again. Cannot be fixed. But we as the church of the living God. For as much time as we have remaining. We adhere our lives to the authorized version of the scriptures and be out there preaching the true gospel, being witnesses unto the lost. That's the only hope for anybody here in America. Your hope is in Trump being reelected? You're crazy. You're crazy. There is no hope for this nation. And this ludicrous idea that once the people unfortunately die off, start dying off in droves because they got the steel of the Jesuit poniard, to this idea that that's going to bring about a revival, a prosperity here in America because all these wicked people are dead. And so the right, that's insane. That's insane. Only a money-grubbing, money-hungry, uh, man-fearing, Catholic idol-worshipping devil would say such an idiotic thing as that. There's no hope for America. But for the individual person, spirit, soul, and body, there is hope for Americans. For America, there ain't no hope. But for an American, there is hope. There is hope on the individual basis. Because what has happened? What does God say in the book of Jeremiah? Chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. As a nation, as a nation, God told unto Jeremiah, chapter 7. Chapter 7. Verses 8 unto verse 20. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not, 
and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations? Yeah, you have liberty to be a Catholic for a day. But, come on. You're going to do what the heathen does and then go and worship the Lord. Doesn't make sense to me. In this house, which is called by my name, is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early, and speaking, but ye heard not. And I called unto you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which, I, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And, it will come, and I will cast you out of my sight, as I cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, Neither lift up a cry nor prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. America as a nation is gone. But for individual witnessing, there is hope. And we pray, Lord, keep the government off our back. This Jesuit government away from us so that we may do your work. That you may do your work to us. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary. This is a Catholic nation. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, said the Lord? Do, not, do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn, and shall not be quenched. America as a whole is done. It's to the individual, spirit, soul, and body, person, where there is hope. A national revival, returning unto the God of the Scriptures, is not going to happen. But see, we have to remember what it says in Romans chapter 14, verses 11 and 12. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord God, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Individually. And that's what we need to concentrate on, brethren. Witnessing on to people individually. And you, you, my countrymen, what are you celebrating? We're not independent. We are owned by Catholicism. There's nothing to celebrate. What once was will never be again. Are you saved? Are you hoping that Trump is going to come in here and revive America? It's not going to happen. And when people start dying because of the Jesuit poniard, this prosperity, uh, picking up the pieces of the dead people, that's satanic. It's not going to happen. It's just going to throw America into a, an even greater downfall. Because those who died, what's going to be the prevailing left? Oh, Roman Catholicism. individually if you are to celebrate anything celebrate that the Lord has given you life today that you may repent of your self-righteousness and come unto him broken of your self-righteousness having godly sorrow because it's your fault that he died and in fear of him call upon his name that he may save you he has given you today what are you going to do with it are you going to go out there and engage in riot and excess? Most of you are. Because you're deluded with the American dream. And you have to be asleep to believe the American dream. 
that is going to be it for this video. If I've offended you, I'm sorry. I care about you as an individual more so than anything, and I want to see you get saved. There's going to be a lot of videos uh, to, for you to look at in the description box. Many links, resources for you to consider. Consider these things. God is not blessing America. But the little G God of this world is. You've messed around long enough. You've played Christian in your little church building long enough. You've followed a man long enough. Time is running out. <laughs> Time is running out. And, uh, and as we have already looked at uh, in Jeremiah chapter 5, okay, as we have already looked at, I want to leave you with this one thing. In Jeremiah chapter 5, as we have already read. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 30 on, and 31. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. Now what will ye do? What will ye do in the end now?